Not everything is a client-server architecture. There are also peer-to-peer -peer architectures. In a peer-to-peer -peer system, all participants in a distributed application contribute computational resources, processing, data storage, network capacity. Messages are relayed through a network of participants in order to achieve something. And each participant only has partial knowledge of the whole network. So, like the internet itself, a peer-to-peer -peer application doesn't really have one centralized controller for it. You just have a bunch of computers, each of which has to know about some portion of the network in order to make any communication possible. But it's not the case that any, any machine knows all of the pieces. So there are issues with network structure concerns because some data transfer on the internet is faster than others, and the time required to transfer a message through a peer-to-peer -peer network depends on the route chosen. So if you want to start from here and send a message to this computer, but these two computers don't even know that they're both in the same network or how to transfer directly to each other, well then, it has to be the case that you send information through some third party. And sending it this way might be faster or slower than sending it in a route that has more hops along the way. Or maybe there's some other route that we could choose from. So part of building a peer-to-peer -peer application is figuring out how to send messages through the network. But once you figure out all these issues, you get some benefits over what you see in uh, client-server applications. In particular, there might be no single point of failure anymore. Any, any computer could drop off and the network would still run. And it's the case that because each different participant is contributing computational resources, the resources available scale with the number of users. So you don't just run out of computation because everybody who joins in helps do all the work. Okay, so one example is Skype. When you make Skype calls, you're actually participating in a peer-to-peer -peer application. This is a voice over internet protocol system where I can talk to anybody in the world I want. Now, there is some client-server interaction. So the official Skype servers know who's on your buddy list and who's online and that kind of thing. But when you're actually making a conversation, between two computers that cannot send messages directly to each other, those conversations aren't relayed through the Skype server, but instead through super nodes. Any Skype client with its own IP address may be a super node. So if I have a conversation with you, my conversation could be routed through some third party. Now, Skype uses encryption, so it's not that anyone can listen in on it. Although the way in which it uses encryption is not publicly available, so we don't really know how hard or easy it is to break. Okay, so why is this important? If client A and client B want to talk to each other, and there's a firewall in the way that prevents them from communicating directly, then they have to send a message through a third party that has a, its own IP address. So that means that client A can talk to client C, client B can talk to client C. And so when we have a Skype conversation, then uh, we send all of our messages through this supernova. And a client not behind a firewall can be used as a super node. You don't really know whether your computer is routing voice traffic from somebody else to somebody else. It's just part of what happens when you run Skype. 